Mr. President, I want to be on this meeting. Governor Dundee, every time we have a diplomatic meeting with the UHG, you glare at them and tell them they made a grave error kicking Australia out. That's because they did. We've been over this. They didn't want one of their member nations to be the country that waged a war on birds and lost. We didn't lose the emu war. It was a tie. Not to mention virtually everything alive in your country is lethal to Xenos. How is that our fault? You've lost more politicians to wildlife than assassins. Just goes to show how tough we are. Your last Prime Minister, before we took you on as a state, invited the UHG officials to his home. I wouldn't stop his pet croc from attacking them because he insisted they wrestle it. He only stopped it himself when the croc had tore one of their legs off. Your president had no trouble wrestling that croc. They just sent weak officials. Your people are loud, your tourists are obnoxious. You've made an industry around showing off your super dangerous wildlife and fighting it for fun. You grill as much meat as possible, and your state seal features an outlaw fierce fighting a shark and a croc at the same time. Ned Kelly, yeah. I know who he is. After all, you're Ned Dundee, and I'm sure that wasn't a mistake. President Cross set his hands on the governor's shoulders as he looked him in the eyes. Ned, face it. You belong with us Americans. We share so much in common. No one else on this planet wanted you, except us. We're in the middle of a war right now. I don't need you antagonizing the USG with your insistence on resting them to prove they were wrong. The governor sighed. I just hate that they let those sheep shaggers next door in, but not us. Those sheep shaggers live on one of the nicest islands we've got. It's the fucking Shire, Ned. Screw them. We've got each other. Our two countries represent almost the entirety of the human military base. It's our job to make the Xenos hate us so the rest of humanity can play nice. Besides, you weren't the only ones disappointed with how those negotiations went down. Are you still mad about the Canadians? It was those weirdo Frenchy Canadians and I know it. We totally have let them keep that commie healthcare, but no way were we going to repeat everything in frog talk. He scowled for a moment, and then looked back to Ned. But we have you now. You wrestle crocs, we wrestle gators. Come on, you know you're in the right country. I guess... Could... Could we make Ned Kelly Day a national holiday? And take it up with Congress. Maybe sell it as Badass Outlaw Day. We have a few outlaws of our own, after all. Yeah, the might work. Here, I'll let you join me in the meeting, but be nice. No wrestling, okay? Okay. Promise? Promise. The president nodded at that, then adjusted his flag cloak and picked up his eagle standard as he carried it into the meeting room. Ned followed behind him. Adjusting his hat lined with croc teeth, and the giant knife tucked into his croc skin belt. The assembled USG officials in their nice suits weren't surprised when the president slammed his standard into the ground, puncturing the floor so it would stand behind his seat. Then he sat down as Ned stood behind him, arms crossed as he glared at the officials. What's this about? Cross asked first. You started a war with the rest of the galaxy and dragged us into it. His counterpart was Sophie Dorflinger. Once she was the head of the Swiss bank, but had tried her hand at politics and somehow managed to find that perfect mesh of utterly ruthless yet maternal. Her hair was as grey as her suit, and her face was so perfectly neutral it looked like a statue. She played the varied and numerous special interest groups against one another, and maintained a perfect balance in the UHG. Plus she answered 90% of press conference questions with no comment. Correction. The rest of the galaxy decided to declare war on us and didn't bother to check facts. You devastated the core colony of the Galactic Secret Service species. After they started killing and kidnapping your citizens unlawfully. 
We never asked you to intervene. You didn't need to. Your redneck criminal is harboring a terrorist and won't give her up. Our law-abiding citizen has a contract to guard a diplomat from being kidnapped and tortured. You started an alliance with a species akin to space Nazis, from what I can tell. The Libertonians are not space Nazis, but while we're on the topic, the Geneva Art Museum has a wonderful exhibit on early 1900s art. Did you guys keep all the receipts for those? Have you tried opening diplomatic channels with the Crustacans? We don't negotiate with ass face crab terrorists. Why don't you send your pet psychopath away, and we can discuss this like civilized people? Careful. I hear Al and Master Seed and join us, since you're all sticks in the mud who keeps telling them not to drink so much. I might have even more uncivilized citizens soon. It's for their own good. Them and the Russians drink far too much. Pick on the Ruskies too? Maybe they'll join us. He was quiet for a moment, and then shook his head, at the same time as Sophie. No, never mind, they'd never do it. But maybe we should discuss this one-on-one. -on -one. She nodded, and tilted her head to the door, as the assembled UHG officials rose, taking their folders and notebooks. Ned looked down, and the president nodded before he began to walk out as well. Soon, they were alone in the large conference room. Just the President of the USA and the President of the UHG. She spoke first. Did your children get the gifts I sent? Oh, yes, they're wonderful. Thank you again, it's always so thoughtful. Well, I figure someone has to buy them something cultural. Huh, and your grandkids? Oh, they love the toys you sent. Just can't get those things in Europe. They're so crass and obscene. I love it. And tell your wife we look forward to the next time she brings them over to visit. And the same to your kids and grandkids. We had a blast. It's too bad we have to pretend not to interact. He shrugged. Eh? The nature of politics. He reached into his suit and pulled out a one pound package of uncut premium bacon, sliding it across the table to her. She smiled and pulled up her purse, putting out a giant bar of Swiss chocolate, and slid it to him as he said, You know, we could easily have lackeys do this for us. Oh, but it's so fun. We get to be spies, was her reply. He laughed at that, and picked up the bar of chocolate, and she dropped the package of bacon into her purse. Nice sign about the art museum. I had a writer make up a list of quips for me, I won't lie, but seriously, the Irish aren't happy the central admin keeps turning down some petition. They want to make us designate a Fuck England Day, who in return want us to recognise St. Patrick's Day as Drunk Potato Day. The Japanese and the Chinese still won't let up about this or that. Greece still wants reparations from Germany for the invasion. Which one? Does it really matter? I guess not. We're a unified government, but everyone still hates each other. Now they just try to take it out through paperwork. How do you keep all the states in line? Sports. We promote certain rivalries, so specific areas concentrate their hatred against only certain other areas rather than everyone else. New York and New England, San Francisco and LA, Alabama and itself, same with Oregon. We were a little worried about Australia, but we've got a nice rivalry brewing between Sydney and Dallas, plus Melbourne and Miami. Not to mention they still rag on New Zealand about being full of sheep shaggers. Now, about the war we're in. I know you don't have any regular communications with them, but you're aware of the council vote? Yeah, we're aware. The founders are ramping up and the member nations are dragging their heels, but they're getting ready to join in. We're prepping to send a very large force to the Libertonian colony and home planet, and then just turtle up. After that, we'll shut down the FTL gates in enemy space, and start pushing our way out system by system. I am fairly sure the member species won't be invading our colonies, but it's clear we can't directly support you. Alright then, so the Space Naz and Mossad are suddenly full of American citizens? They're filling out the paperwork. 
Also, due to some miscommunication about tariffs, you're going to be receiving five super tanks of materials every week, until we can get our production up. Also, we've reviewed our records, and apparently we made a mistake. All uranium mines are actually on American territory. A mistake. No harm done. What about your bases in the Centauri Abyss and the Marine Traverse? She sighed out at that. We were so careful. How did you find out? He just stared at her and arched an eyebrow. Do you really need to spy on us that bad? He shrugged. We'll be given the territory we gain to you, but I want to keep one planet to dedicate to our hero. Who's that? Our citizen you so rudely called a redneck, of course. No other than Billy Bob Space Trucker. The USS Predator was the newest Special Forces cruiser in the fleet. It had one of the latest skip drives and the best stealth technology there was. The crabs had been the secret police so long they'd grown lazy, preferring to tell people to forget what they saw rather than avoid detection altogether. The cruiser had a smaller crew complement because of the space needed for the stealth tech and last skip drive, but they still had a full complement of 50 archangels and no reduction to their offensive capabilities. Billy Bob was staring straight at it, and from less than a hundred yards as it closed into dock, and he still had trouble seeing the damn thing against the darkness of space. Finally, there was the clang of the metallic dock, and the airlock opened to let ten new black power-suited commandos advance onto the rosy. Is this really necessary? Billy Bob was asking, as they stomped on board. Maybe they were just walking, but the magnets in their boots kept stomping down. Yes, we have to comb the ship for any bugs just in case before we torch it and leave, Crunch was saying, as the new archangels filed past except the last one. Not bad, Fruity Pebbles. Glad to see you let the Siri take the lead in the rescue mission to get off the planet, said the so far nameless archangel. Before Crunch could reply, Billy Bob simply stated, Who the fuck are you, Admiral Snackbar? Get the fuck off my ship! The towering power suit turned to Billy Bob. I'm Major Grenshaw. I outrank you, Lieutenant. This is my fucking ship. I'm flying it and in charge of it, which makes it my ship. I don't remember giving you permission to board my ship. I let the others pass just fine because they're following orders, but you... I don't think I want you on my ship. Besides, you just call me a Lieutenant, which I am, which means I'm not a civvy. Gotta mark you down for that one. You can't talk to a superior officer that way, Lieutenant. I think I just fucking did. Now get off my ship! This ship was not assigned to you. There is no CO of this ship. You can't deny me permission to board. Well, then just fuck off in general. You're speaking to an Archangel, Lieutenant. The Major growled out. I've been speaking to them. Some of them saved my life and the life of my friend, so you don't really scare me. Billy Bob stared up at the figure before him, knowing the commando inside could no doubt mop the floor of his face outside the suit, but that wasn't really the point. You have no authority over me, Lieutenant. The figure moved forward, and Billy Bob had to jump aside to avoid being knocked down by him. Then, Billy Bob smiled at Crunch. Want to show me to your CEO? They boarded the Predator then, nodding at the extra archangels waiting inside the airlock. Expecting this to be a Xeno trap, were you? Billy Bob asked one of the black face plates. Never can be too careful, sir. Billy Bob shrugged as Crunch led him through the square hallways designed to easily accommodate the power suits. The bridge was at the centre of the upper deck of the ship, which took them a good five minutes to walk to. Billy Bob had forgotten what it was like on these giant ships, he missed his longhorn. Soon enough, they were passing by two more archangels guarding the bridge, and he was suddenly among normal humans again. Humans in uniforms, but humans even so. He looked around as the various officers and staff on the bridge looked his way. The bridge was arrayed in a general tee with the pilot, co-pilot, and navigator, 
up at the junction, and the rest to raid the main line. There was a command chair at the end of the line to Billy Bob's right, but he didn't see anyone sitting in it. Rad, who's the captain? One of the figures in blue turned around to face him then. A woman he guessed to be in her late 40s or early 50s. Blue eyes, black and white hair. She didn't seem to believe in colouring it. I'm the captain here. You're the VIP? Yes, about that. I want a promotion. The woman frowned at that, tilting her head a little as she looked at him. Is that right, Lieutenant? Yes, I'm well aware that this is probably my one and only chance to leverage the brass to do anything I want, so I'm going for it. And why do you want to be promoted? The same reason as anyone else. More power, more money. I'm sure you've got a direct FTR line to someone who can promote me. I assure you, Lieutenant, I won't be promoting anyone so they can commandeer my vessel. Billy Bob shook his head at that. No, 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 you misunderstand. I'm a pilot. That makes me Space Force, really, not Navy per se. The captain sighed and shook her head. I always wish we'd come up for a better name for that. And what would you achieve being a higher rank in Space Force officer? I don't have any small craft in this ship, just Navy and Archangels. Bingo. And thanks to the rules of officer division, I can't boss around Navy officers since the well-being of the ship comes first. But I can. He pointed at her with a smile as he let her complete the thought. You can give orders to ground forces. She looked a little confused. Ah, there we go. Which means that while in the course of my mission, I'm in need of proceeding on my own. I get to tell the ground forces assigned to protect me to... He pointed at her again, as she thought that one over. Fuck off, she ventured. Ding, 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 we have a winner. He smiled at her, and she just looked a bit more confused. Let me get this straight. You want to be promoted so that you can tell your bodyguards to stop? Yeah, I know where this is going. I'm a VIP. I'm important. They want me to survive, blah, blah, blah. I'm not worth risking archangels on. These Zenos are rather bad at killing me. Aside from the museum, but that was a trap. Why was the whole cruiser on me? So, you want me to contact the brass and have them promote you? Just so you can make sure the brass doesn't get to baby you with commandos? Who you think could be put to better use? You got it in one. He said with a smile. And what makes you think they don't just demote you instead? I'm friends with the Liprotonian diplomat. Ah, yes, the birds. Space Eagle Raptors. Their four hands end in super sharp claws. Do they? Hmm. Maybe they'll be more useful than I thought. She thought it over, and then shrugged. I guess I'll talk to the brass. I'm coming with you, he said. They walked to the back of the bridge as she punched in a code on a door and waved him into a room beyond. There was a comms room, with two techs hunched over terminals, and a large screen at the back. Get the brass on the line, the captain said simply, as one of the techs typed in his terminal. Then the screen in front of them began to show a video, of some old big band playing a song. The hell is this? I think there's the brass section, Billy Bob pointed out. They looked over at the tech who smiled. Sorry, sir, you didn't specify which brass, so I figured to just bring up a whole section. The captain reached over and smacked the side of his head as he laughed. Goddamn smart ass! The tech kept typing, and then they saw a screen with another tech on it, looking up at them. Central. This is Commodore Verne of the Predator, who's awake right now. Billy Bob looked over and noted she was the equivalent of a colonel for ground forces. The term captain in the navy now just meant ship CEO, while the old rank had been replaced with commodore in an attempt to make it less confusing. It hadn't worked. Now it was just confusing in a different way, when you needed to appoint a commodore to a ship squadron. Vice Admiral Tevers and Major General Brewster are both awake. 
Pass me through, please. The tech nodded and tapped at his console on the screen. The screen went blue, and after about a minute, half of it came up with a skinny-looking man in a white uniform. He had a gaunt look about him. Vice Admiral Teva speaking. This is Commodore Vern. We're waiting on Major General Brewster, sir. The Admiral nodded, and waited until the other half of the screen filled in, with the image of a barrel-chested man in a green uniform, shaving with a bowie knife. What do you want? Ah, this is Commodore Vern. I have the VIP for my mission here. He wants a promotion. The General stopped shaving, and looked over, while the Admiral frowned. Come again, Commodore, Teva said as Billy Bob stepped forward. I want you to make me a colonel. That way I can order your archangels to stop following me around and get back to the war. You're an important individual, Lieutenant. The Admiral began to shuffle through the data slates on his desk. Just call me Billy Bob. Look, I know you guys want me to stay on this ship all safe and sound, but you're going about it wrong. You don't need to have a full cruiser and 50 archangels protecting two people. There's no way this will get to the capital anyway. What you need is to have this ship helping the war, assassinating Xenos and fucking shit up. Think you know more than us, do you? The general asked, his face half covered in shaving cream. I think you just didn't think about it. You figured send some commandos to babysit me. I got this far, didn't I? Do you really think a single cruiser, even one this nice, would get past everything they got and get me to the capital undetected? You both know I need the CIA, not the military at this point. What's that got to do with this? The general asked. Make me a colonel so I can firmly tell your archangels to fuck off and get back to killing. I'll take my ship to a local black market station and wait for the spooks to show up. You get your cruiser back to the war. In a week or so, I'll show up on the capital and the Libertonian does whatever she needs to. I'll become the CIA's problem. The general shrugged at that. Sure. General Brewster, we need to discuss this more carefully. Tevis urged. Nah, make him a colonel already, Commodore. You tell the angels to get back to killing. The general tapped on the console in front of him, and there was a ping on the terminal behind Billy Bob. Then the screen went dark. The Admiral shook his head and tapped on his own console, before his side of the screen went dark too. Billy Bob blinked. Was that all it took? The Commodore shrugged. There's a war on, Colonel. They'd rather have a cruiser and commandos than a political pawn. Billy Bob laughed and turned to look at the terminal behind him. It had a small 3D printer which was spitting out rank taps. He picked them up and slapped them onto the collar of his plaid shirt. All right. Well, it's been nice, Commodore, but I'm heading back to my ship, he said, and gave her a salute. She returned it with a smirk. He walked back out and nodded at Crunch. I'll shake your hand, but you crush, man. It's been nice, Crunch. Thanks for saving my ass. I'll get you some drinks once this is all over. He gave her another salute, which she returned. Come find me. I'll buy a few for you, too. He grinned and then quickly began to jog back down the way they'd come from. He wanted to be off the ship as soon as possible. He didn't mind military service for obvious reasons, but the sooner he got this moving, the sooner he'd be back to his longhorn with Emily, and he didn't have to worry about the brass changing their minds. He passed the Archangels guarding the boarding tube, and quickly walked back across to the Rosie. Looking around, he found one of the Archangels still scanning the ship with a handheld sensor, you there, Sergeant... something. Where's Admiral Snackbar? Who? He saw the new tabs on Billy Bob's shirt. Uh, sir? Major... Cockface. Whatever his name is. Ow! Oh, Major Cockface is on the bridge, sir. Billy Bob nodded, and quickly jogged through the atlas and up to the bridge. He saw a figure in a power suit, arguing with Emily over something and didn't even need to ask to know that was his man. Hey, Admiral Snackbar! The figure spun around. What? 
Billy Bob pointed to the tabs on his shirt. Get the fuck off my ship. And so ends another chapter in the adventures of Billy Bob. Space Trucker. <laughs>